Hello? Loof? Connected. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, because the uh, funny thing is you're streaming as well, so... <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Did you want me to stop it? I was getting confused. <laughs> uh, well, if you want to use this for demonstration purpose, uh, you know, feel free to. Sure. Okay, so... Alright. Where are we now? So, let me go ahead and set up the... At least the computer side, at least one of my monitors to... Yep. Okay. Let me do this. Uh, screen share. Screen number two. Okay, so I have my instances up uh, from AWS. Is wait, that's <laughs> that's is this from the IntelliSense one? Yeah. Okay. How come you didn't use the the um, is that a Windows instance or a Linux instance? This is the their window instance, uh, I believe. Okay. Unless I've been working on the wrong computer the whole time. No, that should be theirs, cause that's that's mm. team two. Yeah. Um. The thing is, I don't understand why you created a, a Linux instance for yourself, if they already have one created for us. Uh, I didn't create any instances. So that's the one they gave. That's the one they created for you. If you're looking at this one, then uh, this, yeah, this is what I just stumbled upon uh, as soon as I was able to log into AWS the first time, huh. which was literally today. Because <laughs> uh, the thing is, because um, when we checked our instances, mm -hmm. we we didn't have any uh, instances that were working or. Um, created. They were all gone. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I cause like last time I saw this on somebody or one of my teammates' uh, stream, mm -hmm. there was like quite a few, and then like I came back here, you know, logged with my own credentials. Okay, so go ahead, click on that instance, see what the IP address is on it. Uh, right there, instance ID. Yeah. And then that is not. What's the IP address that they gave us? On the PDF file, uh, which week? Uh, we, week uh, two, I think it's week right. two or week or actually week three. Actually, week three. Week three. Okay. Yeah. Let me take a look real quick. Let me check if. Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, it's just okay. It looks like it's gonna just gonna be you and me. Everyone's busy doing their thing. That's fine. Oh. Uh, yeah. I'm checking. We. All right. I I have to go into my Google Drive. Finally able to go log into Apollo's Verde or Apollo's Auto was the first time. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh, okay. So this is what I should have been able to do uh, while when I was in Idaho. So, are we trying to do just week three stuff? Yeah, I just want to make sure like I'm doing it correctly because, and I don't know if like we we're supposed to be building from the previous week. Um, because the previous week was about VPN and configuring the firewall, but this week is about endpoint protection, which we're using Komodo Dragon platform. As far as yeah. them, as far as it being building on top of the previous week i mean the vpn we need um but as far as the firewall is concerned i don't think it's and the only reason Not related that, right and the only reason the firewall and the url filtering might come into play is if you have to access google on your windows instance <laughs> okay that's that's the that's the only thing you'll run into if you've already have your firewall blocking google so yeah, uh, it looks like somebody actually set it up for us already. 
set up. Okay, the uh, the Google one, the Google block. Yeah, like the block Google. Okay, <laughs> I was like, so oh, interesting. So they gave you an instance for Ubuntu, which is Ubuntu two, and yep. and I think I don't know why that instance is left on your AWS for t your team but that's not the same IP that they gave us on the um, go back to the PDF okay uh, the PDF is uh, we're just looking off of my my uh, real computer so right N notice your IP is 188 at the end but this IP that your your Linux instance is running that's the public IP. You want to look at the private IP, which is right behind the window. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> okay. So that's the private IP, and it's not the same as what we have given. So you're trying, you're basically going to practice on that window, that Linux instance if you want, but if you want it to show, or at least follow along what the document says there you want to install the um, Linux binary there you can use that when that uh, instance on your AWS console as a practice but um, the steps are literally the same thing it's just making sure that you <laughs> you want to enroll the one at 188 I see. Um, so can we just start with the Windows first and then uh, um, and move to the Linux? I, sure. I mean, I, th I thought you already had the Windows one done. You know, I no, well, the thing is, um, whatchamacallit, uh, I mistaken what I was seeing on the Komodo. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this uh, this was the Windows I was referring to. Uh, let me get to log in. Right. So you downloaded the binary there, right? Yeah, I've downloaded a binary from here, uh -huh. and it's in the downloads. <sighs> Dang, this thing pesters me so much. And uh, you had it, you already ran the installer. I tried to. You did? That's where I'm failing. What? What? What is this saying when you try to install it? No, like nothing happens. I click on it, nothing happens. Oh. So this is yeah like for see I have this one this is most likely Windows because I didn't I stopped downloading Linux to give it a shot so let me just restore it back it's probably it's probably back in the downloads um check in the right corner right there with the up arrow and see if your Komodo thingy is running so endpoint communication is running and the antivirus is running should that should be working. So it's already been installed. So either one of your member team members did it, or that's already running. I mean, okay. I don't remember clicking anything on the application, but this thing did appear, did show up. So okay. So when you installed it, um. Did you tell it to reboot, or did you just tell it not to reboot when you did the binary? Do you, re do you remember doing that? No, like I said, like nothing popped up for me, and I, I so I guess you can. I guess it's safe to assume that somebody else already installed it, but did not document it. Right. So it's installed, and the way you can tell if you go into your uh, Dragon platform. Nope. This is remote. Uh, we didn't. We didn't even do the remote stuff. <laughs> but oh, I cool. tried. I tried something, but yeah, um, I learned something about this uh, remote control. <laughs> okay, you're going through Rackspace. The what? No, you got that documentation through Rackspace. That's good. Um, so if you Who go under, you that's fine. That's that's the right one. So if you go under device list, oh, it is the right one. <laughs> I thought it was Amazon. Okay. Not not a bulk installer, the device list. Okay, device list. Uh huh. And then so it's one of those two PCs is yours. Yep. 
so you can just either rename it to identify but one way you can do it is go ahead and click on it and that's not your team member is it the owner on uh, top left uh, it says sorry it says the machine name ec2 amz is that yeah, I don't know who that is. Okay, go back go back to the device list and go to the second one. That one, yeah. This one, yeah, my teammate. All right, so what you could do so you can identify that this is your team's machine, you can go under manage profiles. Manage profile. Right. Uh, I think I saw it somewhere around. Right there in the far right one more. There you go. Oh. <laughs> and you can actually change the name of your machine somehow. Uh, it's not. No, go back. There's a way to change it. Go, keep going back. Keep going back. There's a way to change the name of your machine. So device name, device name, not managed profiles. Device name, right underneath the managed profile icon. There you go. And you can just rename your machine. Go to edit on the far right. Just name Let me it. make this window smaller so I can have an easier time tracking. <laughs> okay. So you can just name it Team 2's Machine somehow. Okay. To Windows Server. So you know it's a server. Team 2 Windows Server? Yeah. Okay. And then so I'll remember to keep documents of that. Yep. You, you want to do that now? Yeah, so I'm going to type it in like kind of like notes. Okay. So, um, you know how to create the the bulk binary, and I, I think one of your team members already installed it. That's why, that's why it shows up in the bottom right corner, the endpoint manager. Yeah, like as I remember, I clicked, I installed it, and I clicked on it, and nothing seemed to happen. It was mm -hmm. like it was loading, and then nothing happened. All right, so let me go ahead and put my name in here real quick. Time is 8.33 p.m. There are less than 30 minutes before this thing closes off. <laughs> uh, let's see. Renamed our instance to team to Windows server. Take a quick screenshot and then paste it. Okay. All right. So now you have now you know that this machine, I guess, is installed with Endpoint Manager, and yep. it shows up on the device list. Did you want to do the Linux one too? Oh, um, because uh, the the PDF wanted me to basically install it on the other <laughs> servers. No. No, we only supposed. I think we were supposed to work on our team server. So. Okay. They, they, I was. I wasn't sure which one they were talking about specifically. So. Right. We we uh, the the Windows server and the team server is. Um. I'm sorry. Windows server and the Linux server have, I guess, a number with them. So. It's team one. Team two. Team three. So the next step, or I think what the documentation says, is to get the Linux one installed. All right, and let's go ahead and move on to that then. All right, so yeah, so now I know it was already done. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll just go ahead, conclusion, realization. Installed the what was it called? The device endpoint manager, right? Yeah, endpoint manager. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get to work on the Linux. So going here, book. Go right here, and if I remember the steps, go down here. 
and then just download the installer. Yeah, you can. I usually opt this out. Okay. How do you now? The question would be: You don't want to run it. Just nope. you just want to open it. My question is: How do you get this installer into your Linux? One thing I can think about doing is remotely connecting to the Linux. And um, you have the PPK right there. I have the what? The itns.ppk file. You have that right there, right there on the desktop. Not not that one, that one. PPK. Yeah. Right there. You 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 just moused over it. Oh, I did. Right next to the, right underneath the putty, DWAF, and then right to the right of that, that's your PPK. You're gonna need oh, that. Oh, okay. You're gonna need that file. So. Oh yeah, PPK, PPK files like instance. That's what I read. <laughs> okay, so where where did you put your installer? The one that you just downloaded. Uh, should be in the download section. Okay, just to make it easier, you can actually place that on the desktop. Yeah, usually I grab and then place it on it. The... Alright, just to be sure this is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's first figure out how to SSH into your Linux instance. So you can use PuTTY there. Yep. If I recall from your document. Mm -hmm. uh, did you uh, have? Did, did you save it right there on that profile? It says Ubuntu one. Right there. Right. No, no. Save. Open up Putty. It says right there sessions load. So click Session. that. No, click Ubuntu one. Yeah. Select load. On the right side. Okay, that's your. Is that your? Uh, in, uh, is that your Ubuntu, Ubuntu IP for your team? Let me uh, take a look real quick. Uh, it's probably not because it's supposed to be one eight at the end. Mhm. Mm so let me uh, try to find that document. Yeah, so it should be 172.31.1188. Okay. Not this one. one so ch you can change it to 188. And then change the save sessions to 2. It says save sessions right right there below. It says save sessions. It's, yes, and to then 2. To 2. And just save it. So you have a save. So you have a Ubuntu one and Ubuntu two. Now, do you yeah. know do you know where to go to put the uh, PPK in Putty? Uh, let's see. Where do I go? Hmm. Not sure. Not quite. Okay. Um, you you put it in the SSH uh, category on the right side. Right, on the right. There you go. Oh, uh, okay. Put you have to actually push the the um the plus, and then auth. Off. Under SSH, there's A U T H auth. Oh, authorization. Uh huh. You have to click it, not not push the plus. There you go, and your PPK is already there. You see how it says users administrator desktop slash ints.ppk? This one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So go back all the way to the top in the on the category section and look for the sessions stuff. So use the there you go, sessions. And just just go ahead, click open. Open. So what this does uh, you just have to say yes to this message. And what what this will do, uh, 
the user is Ubuntu. U B U N T Y. Oh. Yeah. U B U T oh. N T T U T U. Enter. Uh, no Z. Enter. All right. So, um, so sh this should log you in automatically. Oh. But this only logs you in. You still have to get the file there. Yep. So what was that word? Um, not fetch. Uh, All right, I'm gonna have to look into your notes. Um, you ready? Uh, okay. Go to the web browser to behind that. Just type in putty putty gen dot com. Actually, the website putty gen dot com. There you go. Push enter so you can find it. Then go to downloads. You need the um you need the pchp.exe file so keep going that's putty gen putty gen no you need to look for okay go scroll back all the way scroll back up okay And then go to the download putty on the menu bar. It says download putty. Yeah, right here. Uh, you're gonna no, at least the content. Well, you're gonna get putty gen. You you need you need. There you go. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Putty for Windows. Then click close. <laughs> That's an ad. You have to click close. All right. So look for pscp.exe here. Looking for this? No, that's psftp. <laughs> okay. P. Ftp. There, right there. It's one of those. You're in a thirty. You're in a sixty-four bit machine, right? Yep. Okay. It's just or, let me let me check this instance. It's, yep, sixty-four bit. Okay, so just go ahead, download the sixty-four bit one. It was F uh, S F T P, right? P S P S C P, because P S C P. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because this is command line. Well, I don't know which one's ads. Um, you see in the message in the bottom left corner, your web browser. In your web, web browser, browser, bottom left corner. Bottom left. Nope. Says, this. Yeah, it says keep. All right, so you can copy that to your desktop. Like bring it out? Yeah. Cause then tight. Uh, that's my spouse. Okay, now now that you have piece SCP and you have the INT file, you now have to go into 
a Windows command line. You have to go into desktop. So CD, CD space, no, no colon, space desktop. Yep. Okay. Do you, do you remember the commands in the notes or do you want me to tell that out to you? Um, well, I can try to find it in the notes. Uh, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. This is how you learn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you you have the PPK file and you have the installer that you want to put what else do you need to install it in your Linux instance um, if you're curious on where to look for the notes it's actually the one that says command line bulk installation command line bulk installation binary and enroll you see that yeah in this week, one right yeah in week three. Oh, it actually loaded up this time i don't know why it didn't load before it should have been should have worked but it's okay it happens <laughs> uh you you actually are staring at the command right there this one? Yeah. Is that what I need to type? Yep. Uh, you, you, you just have to change a few things, though, with that command. Do you know what to change? Uh, let's see. Probably change this. That's right. What, what else do you have to change? And then the address. OK. You can also change where it goes. The Right now, that's an example. It goes to the TMP folder. Which you, is temporary, right? Yeah, it, it exists there on that instance, but you can also change it to where normally you would, you know, copy files to. Like you, desktops? Right. You can just say home slash the user. So go ahead, copy that, and then paste it in there. And then just, you're going to change the, I guess, the installer name, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, which item is this going to be? One thing you could do. Um, okay, you could do that too. <laughs> is that the one? It looks like that I have another one up here too. Oh, uh, this this is probably my failed attempt. <laughs> Wait, what's well? How what size is that top one? That one's eight megs. Eight, and then this one is thirty-two. That's today's date, so wait, that's today's. What about the other one, the top one? Yeah. 8.78. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that the bottom one might be what you want to run or copy. Yeah, because more data, right? Yeah. Just change the name. Oh. EA 741 KDD. Just to make sure capital K. All right, and then to oops, dang it. one and then to you can home. actually yeah you can place it in home home slash ubuntu ubuntu okay so okay if you push enter push. this should be instantaneous because you're on the cloud what denied hmm did you spell the username right because you put an extra N at Ubuntu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so push the up arrow. There you go.
There we go. Okay. Uh, go back to the putty instance or putty uh, session. All right. Do ls. Not alias. A ls. <laughs> ls. Not less. Oh, ls. Okay. How do you make that into executable? Just run it. Um, no, you have to change it to make. You have to change the file so it's an executable. Executable. Okay, type in the command. You ready? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> C H M O. D. Change mod, huh? Right. Space. Plus. X. Space. And then the name of the file, which is. I T E S M. E A 7. 4 1. K D D. Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to remember what the X stands for. The X just says to make it uh, executable. It, it gives you the permission to just make all the the groupings of the Linux file so that it's executable. So okay. you probably named it wrong. Yep. CCSL. These fonts are so tiny. Yep. All right, that that's a good sign. Right. So now you do sudo. Super do. Then dot slash, and then the name of the file you want to run. Okay, so at the end it's, it should say enrolled. <laughs> so it's installing, installing, installing all the things it needs to install. And then at this end it should say enrolled. Okay, so we'll be on the lookout for that last thing once these guys are done. Mm -hmm. I definitely need to look back on my Linux. <laughs> Processing triggers. Yep. yep. Device is yeah. non-rolled. Okay. Now go back to the Dragon platform. And then go ahead to list of devices. Oh, there it is. Okay. You can rename it to Team 2. Good job. <laughs> yep. First time through, I think, but then the second time through, <laughs> yeah, it should be a lot faster. <laughs> you should call it Linux Ubuntu Linux. Sorry, yeah. yeah. I was like, so you know, to click Linux Ubuntu. Please use. <laughs> okay, go, right, go. Let me go ahead and document that. Okay. Any questions? Uh, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, for the questions, don't really, I uh, don't really have much besides just like going back to the previous chapters or at least the previous weeks and then kind of explore through again. Okay. Or explore through on my own. Okay. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Well, I'm doing, doing the best I can. Well, I'm glad I'm able to help you install the Linux stuff. I mean, 
was my yeah. document was my documentation too brief and didn't have specific instructions? Oh no, I was more concerned. Of, I I didn't read into full detail because I was trying to get get the Windows installation proper. You know, doing it on the Windows side properly before going into Linux. Okay. But, you know, the fact that I was able able to recall a few things here and there from your notes means like you know something is working. Okay. And then it's just like you know for somebody with just doing a one time read through. Right. But uh, I think uh, for the PDFs, I honestly think like there could be some more specifics. Unless that's in, what they're in my notes or or in the uh, the IntelliSense and stuff. IntelliSense. Yeah, I think I think they made it so that um, uh, install Linux. Um, like Come under on. the devices, you see the packages. Create the installation binaries that you would take to each servers to execute and run on each server. Ensure the right package is installed for the right type of servers. I, I'm I, like, so what? What I do? Oh. Well, <laughs> one thing you should do is uh, we know how to get to the Dragon platform, right? Yeah. And they specifically said in there to go to applications. I guess in Endpoint Manager, right? And yeah, create your passwords, navigate to applications. And then they, they, they also said to go to devices and do the bulk installation. And I'm, yep. I'm sure it's pretty, uh, you know, it's clear what we need to do. We need to get the binary going. Yeah, and then it's just like uh, whether or not, you know, like, I, I mean, I know they're not trying to, hold, I mean, you know, I know like, they're not supposed to hold our hand to go through uh, through it all, but it's kind of like uh, what what uh, what's a good reference to know that you did it correctly? You know. Well, the good reference would be to look at your device list. Go ahead, look at your device list. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just talking about the notes, but other than that, uh, and yeah, you have you know team two and team. To Windows and Teams to Linux installed, so that's that's one way to verify your installation work is is it actually shows up as a device in the Dragon platform. Yes, no, I'm just saying, I'm just like saying, speaking from like somebody who has not done it. Period. You know, first time. I understand. Um, they gave us access yeah. to the Dragon Dragon platform, and they gave us directions to where to go to just get the binary going and I think that's enough for us to figure out how to install binary okay but yeah um, yep so all is good and uh, thank you very much again okay a any other and, questions uh, nope I think the last thing to do now is try to find their payload somewhere <laughs> um, for payloads go ahead you see in the top right corner the notifications, right? Yeah, those kind of give you kind of uh, under notifications, under notifications. There you go. Kind of give you a little bit of alerts of what's going on. Oh, okay. Okay. The other thing you want to also look into, because um, they weren't specific on where the alerts would come from. Go ahead. Go back to the uh, Dragon platform. Yep. Oh, how do I get rid of this? This was this on was the me top, on, just just click the Dragon oh, okay. platform link on the. There you go, and then um, go under applications and look at I guess this. Uh, yeah, go to endpoint protection again. Endpoint protection. So this one shows you the antivirus stuff, but there's more. You see how it says security subsystems? You can look through there. Go go back up there to the dashboard. Dashboard. And look at audits and alerts. And I mean, you can explore the dashboard. You can explore the security subsystems area. You're, you're this, yeah, this this exercise is basically getting you familiar with being an admin if you had the Dragon platform at your fingertips. So you look at security subsystems to see if there's any alerts. 
So this is just an overview of what um, uh, endpoints we have installed. Right now we have three or two Linux instances two. down in four windows. Yeah. And then uh, even though this is more of a law-based compliance. Right. So um, as far as the alerts is concerned, I don't think they have the HIPS, the host intrusion prevention system alerts going. They, they just want us to get familiar of how to find alerts going through the logs, going through notifications. And kind of like this. Right. Wait, so we're not trying to get rid of the virus or contain it? Um, no, we're just trying to look for alerts that, I guess, show up. I mean, you can <laughs> get rid of the viruses if you want. But it's up to you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so that I think this exercise is for us to get to know the Komodo platform if we were administrating it. Um, Got it. They they did send like a few alerts. Um, you just have to go through the dashboard area, go to the no notifications, and just and then seeing this. Yeah. So technically, I already found the problem. <laughs> no, you only found we only found the notifications. There's actually should be more. I mean, again, if you go 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 back go back to the Dragon platform. Yeah. So back to that audit. Yeah, just go go through the audits to see what alerts come up. So dashboard, and then just go through the try try to audit logs. I mean, this tells yeah, you, that's... yeah, this tells you all the stuff that you've been doing in the background. Yeah, you can see what I've been doing. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that, that's good. You're exploring. Uh, that's that's part of the uh, it's part of this internship. They gave us tools to explore, so you just kind of look through it. Is this how they grade us? <laughs> um, I don't know how it's graded, but as long as you're learning, you're you're making progress. Yeah, I, you know, like, was it, here's, okay, so it's like, for example, here's the goal in the middle, this is me, I'm going to explore this side, and then this side, hopefully, eventually, I get to the goal. <laughs> that's good, that's good. All right, so, yeah, so, you know, I just feel free to continually log around, mess around. Yeah, um, and then take screenshots if you think you've found areas where you think the, uh, is considered an, an alert to you, like, the procedure. Like this? Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, if you think it's an alert, go ahead and <laughs> list it. But like, like I said, it just, it just, it's all about exploration and what you think is um, a what's considered an alert to you that we should pay attention to if we were at an admin. I see. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, okay. doesn't do much. All right. Okay. You did, Sounds good. So. so, so you have the Linux one installed. You have the Windows one already figured out, and that's it. You just review the, uh, I guess the firewall URL filtering stuff. Yeah, all of that uh, for uh, Palos Altos. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, I mean, creating instance, I'm kind of familiar with Amazon. Right. Or AWS. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So just find the alerts or at least know where it's coming from, not try to kill the virus. No, we're just we're supposed to just get familiar with the uh, the platform. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, how, I'm like trying to find how to get rid of the <laughs> I mean, right, I mean, <laughs> wherever. Okay, what what did you click there? Did you click audit or did you? Oh, this part. Yeah. I think I just did uh, reports. I think no reports would be different. Okay, so what what okay, did you, so what did you select? Was it audit or audit I think, logs? I think it was probably audit logs. Okay, so so these tell you wait the audit logs. Tell you what you've done. Go to under notifications. 
on the far left far notifications far left. yeah maybe that's where you clicked no nope um compliance i guess that's probably it no no, no. or was it valkyrie no i click something trying to move up or scroll up by accident uh security dashboard yeah so yeah just get familiar with the the area yep and then mess around here and there all right so uh so yeah our job is just to find out the source of the alert uh yeah yes yeah, source of alerts if you think it's something that it's notable that we need to pay attention to i mean the logs is one place that i think that's it yeah, dash security board. Yeah, so these are events that I guess they um, that are these are events that are run that are collected by the um, drag dragon endpoint manager security dashboards. I mean, these mm -hmm. can be considered alerts if you wanted to look into each one. But I see containment. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's do. Let's see. Device view. Oh, it's nine. It's already past nine o'clock, and I'm still on. Yeah, I'm still. Yeah, that's good. All right. So. Okay, I think I think I've answered. I think we're good. Answer most of the questions. Thank you for being the uh, example student. Uh, for this video recording. <laughs> yep, thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> um, I hope this wasn't too painful. <laughs> no, I mean, did you want a copy of it too? Um, well, as long as there's access to it, uh, I'm pretty good with that. As long like, as, uh, you know, I'm so as long as you have access to the video. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think you can go ahead and send a copy. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll send you a link. All right, thank you, Alfredo. All right. All right, this is uh, week three with Alfredo and me. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Anthony. <laughs> yep. All right, let's teach the next generation. I'm going to end my screen share now. That's good. And I'm going to stop.